Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at measuring the oil pressure on a Gardner engine. So first of all we'll take a look at the traditional method which is using what I refer to as an aneroid uh, barometer or an aneroid uh, pressure gauge. All we have to do is connect a pipe from anywhere on this manifold here, usually here, up to this union on the back of the gauge and that's it to measure the, the uh, oil pressure for us. It's not complicated at all, dead simple. Now, how does the gauge itself work? Very, very simple. Unfortunately, I don't have the energy of one to show you, but I'm gonna try and illustrate it using my hand. If you can imagine my fist like this, where my fingers are a coiled pipe. The oil pressure comes in the bottom here, and as the pressure comes up, the pipe straightens out. So that pipe comes up and down with the pressure. You may have uh, studied this in school. And on here there's connected a little chain which is wrapped around a little gear and that's what causes the pointer to move. It's so simple. It's, it's pathetically simple. They give no bother at all. Now, as I said, all you have to do is join a pipe from anywhere at all here in the manifold to that gauge and it measures the oil pressure. Now, a couple of considerations here. Um, this is a modern one. You'll get some idea of the diameter of the copper pipe there. Generally speaking, we use copper because it's very easy to bend round corners and so on, and it doesn't corrode, it's a super job. So the copper pipe doesn't need to be of a very large diameter at all. In fact, the smaller it is, the better, really. Because the smaller it is, the less oil you'll use uh, should the pipe break. The, not so much oil will spill out and you will it'll come out slowly enough to give you time to stop the engine or whatever take some sort of um, emergency emergency ac um, action now this gauge uh, we've got the same old problem with Gardner um, it's got a full scale deflection of 150 psi now that's too high because on an LXB engine they uh, maximum oil pressure should be about 35 psi at a thousand rpm with a hot engine. The equivalent on an LW engine is 45 psi. As far as I remember, the 4LK is also 35. So, um, as I said, the narrower this pipe is, the better within reason uh, because you're less likely to get a major spill of oil should the pipe break. Now, Another way of achieving the same end is if you've got a small hole, a tiny small hole in some one of the fittings um, in your pipework. Normally this would be on, on here someplace. So that small hole has the effect of restricting the oil in the event of a, a breakage. And it also dampens the fluctuation in the oil pressure. Without that, you can find that the needle on the gauge will, uh, will flicker with, with um, variations in oil pressure, uh, which is a little bit dis disconcerting. Um, another way of achieving the same end is by having a glycerine-filled gauge. You'll see this one here. I hope I can illustrate that for you, has got glycerin inside. Now, a point to note here, it tells you on here that you should pierce this bung here uh, after the gauge is fitted. Some of them even say remove the bung. Now that makes no sense to me at all because dirt's going to get in there and also, you could very easily inadvertently spill the glycerine out while you're fitting the gauge. So, um, you'll have to make up your own mind on that. Uh, probably the piercing is to allow for expansion uh, with increasing in, in, um, in temperature. 
Now, that one has a full scale deflection of 60 PSI, which is fine. And in fact, these gauges are not expensive at all. And I find they really work quite well. They're fine, they're, they're spot on. Um, <clears throat> this is an original Gardner one. You'll see that it's got a full scale deflection of uh, 100 PSI, which again is fine. Maybe a wee bit of an overkill, but these were very popular. These were, this was very often the, uh, the scale that was used. Here's another one that simply indicates low and high. Now this would be more, you would find this more in a truck rather than, rather than on a boat. It doesn't actually give you any readings at all. So if we move on then to uh, electrical systems, here's a typical transducer here. Um, you'll see that it's obviously for pressure because there's a hole in the bottom. Um, there's obviously a diaphragm of some sort inside here which flexes with the variation in pressure and that obviously causes a change in resistance uh, which will cause a different electric current to flow here and that's how you get the reading up on the gauge. The advantage of these of course is that the gauge can be some distance away from, from the sensor. But this one you'll notice, we're back to the same problem that we had with the temperature, it's only got one terminal on it. Which means that it's reliant on an earth through the bottom of the gauge here and through the engine. And that's not ideal for a boat. That's not insulated return. Fine in a vehicle, but not in a boat. In a boat, we're going to need uh, a sender with Two terminals on it. This one has also got, if you can, I hope you can see there, it's got a little adjustment screw on it. Um, I suspect this may be uh, actually not for measuring pressure but as an alarm. That's probably for an alarm. This one here has three terminals on it. I suspect also that's for an alarm, not for measuring oil pressure. But they're out there, you'll, you'll get them. You'll get them with two terminals on and they're fine for measuring, uh, for using an electrical method for measuring on pressure. Super job. This one, uh, you might typically find in your box. Um, it's a Murphy gauge and it's got a, a full scale deflection of 400 PSI. Now that's, that's ridiculous, it's far too high. That's gonna be no good on a gardener. It's just, it just wouldn't be accurate enough. Here we've got the oil pressure release valve, which uh, I think I explained to you before. The oil pressure can be adjusted very simply by taking off this cap here, undoing this lock nut here, and then screwing down that, that um, slotted screw there. Uh, not very much, half a turn, maybe one turn at the outside is all you need, and that will adjust the oil pressure. But you shouldn't normally need to do that. It's not that critical, really. If it's within <clears throat> 10 PSI or something like that, either way, it'll not make much difference, really. So that's it. Um, I don't have a lot more for you on measuring oil pressure um, because it's, there's nothing to it, really. Um, it's really very, very simple. My preferred method myself is the hydraulic method using an aneroid, an aneroid instrument and just simple copper, copper pipe. Um, so I hope you found that useful and feel free to ask me whatever questions you want. Uh, we'll go on now and have a look at measuring RPM. We've already done temperature in a different video. So we'll do RPM next and then perhaps one on general instrumentation. Thanks a lot.